Now before getting into the poem, the first thing that we want to do is look at the structure of the poem in order to understand more about the overall trajectory of the work. The poem is divided into four sections, or cantos if you will, and within each canto there are individual sections themselves. The overarching story is about the character of Gowan. Gowan is a young man, the nephew of Arthur, and he constitutes what we can consider to be the solar hero. This is a, a, a character who follows a certain type of path during the course of his story. As Joseph Campbell, the great commentator on uh, literature, suggested, the monomyth of the solar hero follows a certain pattern of events. He has a 17 events, I believe, and I'm reducing them for ease to roughly five events. The five events that constitute the movement of the hero is that he begins as a naive young man or an inexperienced young man in a setting which is familiar to him. And he moves from this familiar setting, either by necessity or by desire to see the world, he's prompted to leave that area that he's familiar with and go out into the world at large. When he goes out into the world at large, then, in the second stage, he meets numerous challenges to his own person. He has to fight different monsters or creatures. In the third stage, he comes to a castle, normally the castle of his uh, father, for instance, or a character that represents his father. And in that castle of his father, he has to meet the challenges that his father gives him. In the fourth stage of this monomyth by Joseph Campbell, the hero, the sun hero, basically overcomes all of the challenges and he himself becomes something like a god. He is transfigured, what Joseph Campbell called an apotheosis. He is raised up to the level of the god-like figure. From that level of success, after meeting these various challenges, in the fifth stage, the hero returns to his own community as the boon giver, someone who returns to his community and gives back something that will benefit the community, either knowledge or a weapon of some kind or just the experience that he has. When we look at the poem of Gowan and the Green Knight, we will see pretty much this same pattern working itself out. Gowan, the young man, will be traveling outside of the community of of Camelot. He goes out in the, into the wilderness. He meets a character that is very challenging to him and is something of a father figure. That character gives him different uh, challenges that he overcomes and eventually he returns to Camelot with the new knowledge of who he really is. The work overall is a work also of self-discovery, not just of uh, triumph of the hero, but of the hero also learning about himself. And it's that self-knowledge that he brings back. As far as the solar hero goes, We'll look at some of the details within the poem to see what exactly fits into that image of the solar hero. But in essence, the solar hero is a character who represents the sun or has solar imagery on him of some kind, stars and sun itself. He is normally clothed in gold or red. He normally uh, himself confronts a figure who is similar to him in, in those colors and that, that uh, attitude. And he has that apotheosis that then raises him to that level of divinity. So we're going to see in this poem that theme of the solar hero. We're also going to see the theme of the hero's journey as laid out by Joseph Campbell in the monomyth. And we'll see a third theme of chivalry and how chivalry converts the natural desire of a man to dominate the world, to uh, escape death, and to himself uh, use violence and strength to overcome things. Chivalry is going to be set up here in this poem as a way of... Uh, escaping from the pitfalls of life, but also of a way of maintaining yourself sacrosanct to some degree or unhindered to some degree so that you can triumph over all those trials that life throws at you. Let's look now at the poem itself, part one, section one of Gowan and the Green Knight by the Pro Poet. 